Yo yo, what is up guys and welcome back to a brand new league racing video. Today we are racing around the beautiful Suzuka circuit in Japan for round 7 of PSGL. Um, as you guys might know, championship wise we're not looking very strong at the moment. But all we can do is just try as hard as we can to um, get as many points as we can. We just need to try and win races. And that's what we're going to try and do today here. It's not easy doing PSGL as... We're obviously preparing for F1 Esports and we go into a lot of these races with very limited preparation. Um, some teams tend to practice more for league races than others and yeah, that makes it difficult of course, but at the same time it adds a little bit to the challenge. Um, as you can see here, standings wise, we're 3 points behind Freddy Rasmussen, um, we are 29 points behind... Um, Bari, so point system is a little bit different as it's 16 points for a win so we're basically almost two race wins behind so we need Bari to score zero points and then we need to win both races uh, or at least two races as there's uh, four races remaining if you include this one and yeah being 29 points behind it's gonna be pretty tough to uh, catch up to that but you never know you know um, it's very close in esports these days so it's very easy to just make a small mistake and it just pushes you out of Q1 or Q2. So, um, the chance is still there and that's why we're going to try and get the win here today. But, easier said than done as this is basically the F1 Esports grid. We're out for our uh, first Q1 run. Um, and we're going to try and basically do it on one set of tires. Which we try every week, but usually we fail at it because we do tend to suck a little bit in um, Q1 for some reason. I still don't know why, but um, yeah, I just tend to struggle more in Q1 than in Q3. But um, yeah, and before F1 Esports, I'll try and figure out exactly why that is, as it's been an issue for the past two years, basically. And I really need to get on top of it, so I'm gonna try hard and figure out why exactly we are struggling in Q1. But now, to the actual lap. Uh, this one is important and can decide um, Q3 in the end if we do get there. But um, yeah, we really need those two new sets of tires in Q3. So um, this one is important, important to push air, and that's what we're doing. You see, uh, backend really wants to step out there, um, but we managed to stay just within the limit. Uh, good rotation through here. Uh, Stomac goes P1 with a 28.6, but. Uh, shouldn't be surprised to see lap times quite a bit faster than that in Q1 here. Into the second sector. Very easy to uh, spin out in this section. Um, if you play the F1 game yourself, you will know those curb stones on the outside will absolutely yeet you off. And you just bottom out. It's simple as that. Um, you take too much of the outside curb and you just start skating. Um, the tires are not touching the ground and you go, just go skating across the curb. So um, it's very important to not uh, do that. And you can see backhand wants to step out. A car is set up really tricky. And you can see that uh, into the last sector. Now Lucas Blakely goes P1 with a 28.4. But we are in a pretty good middle split as well. So we might be able to improve on that. Into the final chicane. Taking a lot of curb on both sides. And now up to the line, it's going to be a 128.545, not a great last sector for me. Uh, 100 down to Freddy Rasmussen, and I think half of 10 down to Lucas Blakely, so um, most likely good enough. So that's why um, we stayed in, and you can see that in the end we only dropped 2p8. Lucas Blakely with a 5 place grid penalty, um, that's an interesting one, but um, usually we restart the lobby after qualifying so if it's an unfair one it probably gets removed but um yeah the issue is that there tends to be a lot of desync as you can see there danny moreno our teammate out in q1 uh, that's unfortunate struggled a little bit there but um yeah as i want to say usually there's desync uh, in qualifying between at least two people so uh usually we restart the um lobby now on to q2 our first new tire run we've got two new sets for Q2 and two new sets for Q3 and the middle split is not great you can see a 12.0 which is not 
a massive improvement compared to Q1, so uh, we need to do better on that front. Through the last K now, see if we can do better than our first Q1 run, which was a 128.5 up to the line. It's a 0.4, which is an improvement, but it's honestly, for Q2, it's definitely not good enough. You can see Danny Bresnik goes two tenths faster than us, uh, just wasn't a great lap. So we have to improve, you can see as we finish our in-lap, we've dropped down to P11. Barry Boromant, championship leader, only P10. So he's going to have to improve as well. And that just shows how close it is. Now, this one is where it's going to count. Uh, this one needs to be on the limit. Otherwise, we will be out in Q2. DRS open. And into turn 1. And that wall first S section, we're going to have to be a lot more on it. As that's where you can gain a lot of time. Simply by pushing the car to its absolute limit through turn one you can see 600 up already and that just shows Pushing just helps so much through this wall section all already one turn up um, As is always the question of course how much did I sacrifice corner per corner in the lab before but we're definitely more on it And it's a 1.5 stand improvement and we just need to carry that on in the next sector as well through the fast right hander and a bottom down a little bit there but we just just managed to keep it on the island into the hairpin now this is where you can lose or gain a lot of time as well as it's easy to just get a little bit too much wheel spin and now smooth on the steering wheel through this section take a short line which gains you a little bit more time on the f1 game miss the apex through that corner by quite a bit and luckily we managed to still gain time even though I missed the apex by quite a lot and into the final sector now 2.3 tens up and we're gonna try and do it a little bit better in the last she came the last time around down to third gear you can see that was not very good big snap of oversteer and we've lost time in the last corner just over half a tenth and it's only P7 Crazy. It's too much for this session. For an actual session. I think we're out. There's still so many people on laps. Yeah. <sighs> As you can see there, Freddy Rasmussen still on a lap. Wilson Huge still on a lap. We who fast. is a McLaren F1 Esports driver as well. And McLaren have got their stuff sorted basically. So. As you can see, we get pushed out um, of Q2 as Thomas Runhard does a pretty impressive laps here in Q2, but yeah, you can see how close it is, it's crazy. One tenth between um, us and P2, um, and we are P12, so that's just crazy. You can see here Q3 results, Thomas Runhard gets Paul ahead of Lucas Blakely, Alvaro Carlton, Freddy Rasmussen, Tom Ekparazis. Um, surprise, Marcel Kiefer was P1 at the start of Q2 when everyone had done their new tire run. Uh, but he also just didn't improve enough on this last run. So, um, yeah, seems like um, Red Bull does have the pace, but they just didn't quite nail it that time around. Right, and I think it was the same for us a little bit. Lucas Blakely uh, is starting P2 as we restarted the lobby, so his uh, grid penalty did get removed. But now it's time to go on to the race. It's going to be five red lights. And away we go for round seven of PSG. You can see we get a much better start than everyone else ahead of us on the hearts. And we straight away have gained two positions into turn one. Down the inside of Sebastian Job, who tries to keep it around the outside. As I got a little tap from behind, which gives Fabrizio the opportunity into the S section. And that loses us the position um, to Fabrizio De Nozo. Marcel. Still behind us. Uh, he seems to be struggling a little bit more than us. I think he got hit as well. Um, somewhere in that section. So now he's dropped even further back. But we have gained our position and lost the position. So we're still in P12. As for Beach of the Nose, who has amazing pace on this outlap. Seems to have the tire warm up figured out. And we need to try and somewhat defend from Patrick Sipel. So we, we go a little bit in the middle. Not go fully defensive. As Brendan, I think, went really wide there. Locked up um, and does get the position actually on Patrick Siepel. So uh, I don't know how he's done that, but it's quite often with Brandon, he does things uh, that um, 
no one else sometimes has been able to do or just surprises me sometimes uh, as he's now lost the position so he did end up losing out but um, yeah he's a two-time F1 eSports champion for a reason simply said um, and now we're gonna try and get a position back to Fabrizio Dino so you can see we had quite a bit more top speed there so that might indicate that uh, we are lo lo running a lot lower wings than everyone else as uh, Yoni Tormala on the mediums behind us he is probably gonna be a threat here damage. Wing damage, turn one. Uh, so teammate Danny Moreno boxes for a new front wing. Yoni Tormala goes up to P13. And he's going to have so much more grip um, in the opening few laps. Uh, I think our hearts are just about warmed up by now. Um, cause it does take more than a lap for the hearts to warm up. So, yeah, that's why uh, you lose so much time compared to medium runners. But, of course, they will have somewhat the same... Uh, issue when um, they box. Uh, it's just that we lose a lot more track position compared to them. Now, is Johnny Tomla going down the inside? I decided, I decided to not fight this as it would just hurt my own race and that's why I'm not gonna fight it. I can fight it of course but I reckon for our own race it will be much more beneficial if we let him go now and hope someone else uh, ahead tangles with him of course the mediums are not gonna stay this much faster are the leaders um, on medium in the next few laps you can see Yoni did gain another position in the next three laps but it just starts to fade away after a few laps so that's why he's gonna struggle more to gain uh, positions as for Richard also goes a little bit wide there he's really pushing it here and we're gonna try and go for the move um, Fabricio is on much, much higher wings. You can see he's not using ERS, I think so, as well. And I kind of timed that absolutely horrible as we caught him in the middle of 130R. So now we're going to try and go around the outside. Fabricio knows, I think, that we've got uh, a full battery and decided not to fight us too hard. We're going to use that battery again to get back in the DRS of Yoni Tormala. And yeah, that way we can just keep taking advantage. Uh, of that DRS so of course not gonna be easy because he does have still slightly faster tires I think so uh, not much anymore because the mediums do tend to um, equal out really fast compared to the hearts so um, he's of course also stuck behind Daniela that was also on the hearts so that helps us a little bit here I think so to try and stay within the one second window you can see pretty easy uh, for us to stay within the one second window as we enter uh, lap 9 as he only gets a big snap of overs there and goes off and that's a free position for us so that's nice um, but now we do need to get back in the DRS of Daniela Dat. so we're gonna have to push pretty hard here um, to get back in the DRS you can see here um, Barry Berman leading the train uh, on the hearts and I think everyone else ahead of him Let's apart from Thomas Ronhaar in the Haas is um, on hearts um, on medium sorry so um, yeah it's uh, Barry then Freddy and then Thomas uh, the net leaders of the hard runners so um, if we can somehow get to Thomas then we are in for the race win I think I can overtake people pretty easily. Copy. Do what you think's best. So, as you can hear me, I have the discussion with my engineer. Do we go for the undercut or do we uh, stay out? And as you guys might know, I like to stay out. Um, I like to. Yeah, I don't mind time. losing track position uh, as much. So. Yeah, that's why you always usually see me go longer um, in stints than others. I just like the challenge of um, fighting through the field on a fresher set of tires. Um, which I think is a little bit harder on this game, but uh, still, it just feels better. So, as we've caught up to Daniel Adat now, um, who is boxing, as you can see there, onto a set of medium. Same for Freddy Rasmussen. Barry Borman stays out. That was ideal. Try and close the gap to Barry, obviously. As you can hear me say there, Thomas starting on pole on the hearts and is now 
uh, leading the race again. But of course, he's in the net P5. So if he boxes to new mediums, he's probably going to come out in P5. And then he has quite a lot of work to do. So, yeah. As you can see there, our teammate Danny Moreno has retired from the session. And we've gained quite a lot of time to Barry on this lap. Uh, around 7 tenths, I think so. With the help of um, ERS, of course. As we just had 100% more, I think 70% actually, um, starting in that lap. Uh, same to Thomas, I think we've gained 8 tenths to him. And you can see their fast lap of the race. As we're just pushing on as hard as we can as our teammate. His car is pulling off to the side. And uh, retiring from this race. A bit weird, it gives a yellow flag, even race, though he retired race, uh, in the pits, but um, it is what it is. His car will be removed soon from the session. As we go on a lap later, uh, 2.7 seconds behind Thomas Rona now. As Daniel Adat has crashed uh, one corner after Dexter. Are you joking? Yeah, box, 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 box. What are the odds? Are you having a laugh? Well, that's mental. What on the hearts and hearts? <laughs> and as you can see there, the best time saved car ever. This is a big help. I think I think we didn't quite use all the advantage possible from the safety car as we were still one and a half second green on our delta. But it's definitely helping as you can see I have to push here on the pit exit which is why I'm using the overtake button. But we get out right ahead of Freddy Rasmussen and if you guys remember Barry and Freddy boxed quite a bit earlier than us and we would have probably come out in P10 here. No disrespect, P11. I'm glad why did Bresnay overtake him? I'm glad I didn't... Oh my god, Thomas needs to stop going into freaking AI mode. I'm glad I didn't listen to you guys. <laughs> yeah, no, it's alright. <laughs> so yeah, uh, as you can hear me say that, I'm glad I didn't listen to you guys because... Um, my engineers, of course, told me to go for the undercut, but um, they know as well that I like to go long, and that usually pays off if a safety car comes, and that's what happened here today. We tried it in the spa in PSL, but it didn't work out, but now, restart of the race, and you can see we're not going to use too much overtake here, because everyone ahead is going to be fighting, and we kind of just want to do the opposite of what they're doing, um, just to be different, you know? Um, no, but as Thomas is in P3, there's not really any point in rushing this too much. Um, as yeah, we're not going to be able to overtake him as easily as the hard runners, of course. Now, as you guys know from the start of the race, the mediums do tend to fall off. But I think the best thing to do now is to be a little bit patient. Uh, not go too crazy with the battery. Um, as you can see, we've just got so much more grip. So we will have to go for the move soon. As Thomas is 7 tenths ahead. And now I've turned on the overtick button and decided to go down the inside oh my God, of man. Danny Bresne. Just hurting his own eyes. Um, and initially I thought Danny was not going to fight. No idea. Because of the big tire delta, but that's why I send it. Um, but then I saw uh, Danny move, which is kind of natural in that corner. Move and the braking, of course. Um, so yeah. I just was a little bit uh, confused at the time, um, as I thought Danny was not going to fight it. But now we do know he's going to fight it. We've lost a little bit of time. And the move was obviously predominantly my fault, um, but Danny didn't really get a massive disadvantage apart from him losing half a second to Thomas Ronar. But no DRS yet for another two laps, so we're going to have to do this uh, the old-fashioned way, as I would like to say. He's just ruining his own race, man. And now into turn one, down the inside. Um, My god, he made it hard. And up to P4 we go. Um, so yeah, P4 and now we have a little bit of a gap ahead of us. So that makes our life a little bit harder. We've lost a bit of time uh, with the small incident we had with Danny. Um, I'll 
in the meantime, Alfro and Bari collided um, behind us. Kind of our fault, because our, our little incident caused a huge um, close-up of the field behind us. And then it became a little bit chaos. So um, that's why you saw Alvaro just after the move get up to uh, a position. As Thomas actually has a huge incident. And uh, the guy who was pole position and looking to win the I'm race the is now suddenly out um, or not out you. he's still P4 I think he didn't get damaged uh, somehow but um, yeah now we are on the mediums right behind hard runners but as I said as you guys saw earlier on the race the mediums are not holding on very well we have been very very um, Cautious with the use of our ERS, so we should have more than the guys ahead of us. But uh, our mediums don't quite have the advantage anymore of the hearts, especially with one and a half laps to go. Um, you saw Yoni Tomala struggle to make big ground after three laps on those mediums compared to the hearts. And we are kind of in the same scenario. Barry has dropped back quite a lot. You can see two and a half seconds back. And you can see there, going into the final chicane, Tomek was flashing, which means he's under 10% battery. And he's going to have a lot less power on this straight. One lap to go. And you can see the back end wants to step out. The tires are struggling. Fastest lap of the race with the help of the battery. Around the outside we go into turn one. Can we pull it off? We're going to try and squeeze in there around the outside. And we just get squeezed off a little bit there. And yeah. we stay in P3 for now. Side by side on the apex, still sliding up. Yeah. up. But we still do have a battery advantage here, and it's not over yet. You can see we don't quite have the grip anymore through that S section, but we still have that battery, oh. and I reckon a little bit less wings than the Alfa Romeo ahead of us, which should help us on the final straight in the run up to the last chicane. Now. A little bit deep in the hairpin, but we managed to keep the speed up. And the back end just doesn't want to work with us anymore. Traction is poor. A red okay. And you can see now the help of Slipstream coming in handy. Tomek not getting any Slipstream because he's too far back. And now we've got the battery advantage and Slipstream. So we need to time this right because remember, at the start of the race, we timed this wrong. And we almost ruined an opportunity on the overtake of Fabrizio Donoso, but we've learned from that. So we re-enable the overtake button, and into the last chicane we pull on the outside, just ahead at the apex. And I get a big snap of overtake in the final corner, but we manage to pull it off. And up to P2 we go, Lucas got the fastest lap of the race in uh, the last lap. So that's our point gone, unfortunately. But... Um, yeah, from P12 on the grid, this was probably one of the best results uh, we could have got. And yeah, with the help of the safety car, of course. But we have uh, taken that risk in the past and it didn't pay off that time. I think Spa, we gave up quite a few points to in the hope for a safety car like late on. And yeah, it was a bit iffy at the end, wasn't it? Uh, as you can hear me say there, I waited too long probably. Um, with pushing as hard as I could to go for the moves, but yeah, um, that's my bad, that's completely on me. So um, yeah, we keep the title hopes alive um, with that P2 and um, Barry got penalized for the incident at Alvaro, so that season dropped down to P9 and now Lucas is basically on par with um, Barry and we close in a lot of points on Barry. Um, I think 10 to be exact. So that helps us and keeps the title hopes alive. So hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, subscribe for more league racing videos and see you guys next time. Ciao.